Hi, I'm Tony, and welcome to my channel, Watch Time LA. Hello folks, today I thought we'd do a quick video on the inside of an automatic watch, or in this case, a winding watch. This watch only winds. I want to give you some perspective before we start. I'm going to bring into view a watch. This is an extremely tiny woman's watch. I think it's probably from the 60s from a company that no longer exists. Banner, I think, is the name of the brand here. As you can see, this watch is happily ticking away. When I got it, it didn't work. And I'll show you why it didn't work in a little bit. But if you look around, the watch is pretty beat up. I mean, really has no value. Unfortunately, it has a beautiful 17 joule Swiss movement. But because it had this base metal case, you see it's ba badly pitted and oxidized. I could get the, the um, crystal on this looking really nice, but it really doesn't matter because someone jacked up the inside of this thing. In fact, when they opened it up, a part fell out that couldn't possibly fall out unless someone had been messing with it. I'll show you what that is in a minute. But just to give you an idea how big this thing is, I'm going to start at zero and what's our measurement? Case measurement of 22 millimeters. That's how tiny this is. It's smaller than a quarter. Now it would probably be best, you would think, to look inside of one of those monstrous 40 millimeter watches, or 44s, or 46, or some of the Invictors at 57. But this one, for some reason, because of the bridge on top, gives an extraordinary view of the inside. And it shows a lot of parts that aren't normally seen all in one place. So that's why I'm about to show you this particular, uh, the guts of this particular watch. So here's a long shot, give you some perspective, and then we'll kind of bring it in here. Actually, it's very nicely done Swiss movement, but unfortunately, like I said, somebody jacked it up, couldn't wind it, uh, didn't tick. So I made it tick but it's still not going to be usable and I'll show you why in just a second. We're going to go under the scope. Okay, what you see here is a movement that apparently has some sort of sign signature on there. Um, I don't, I'm never going to try uh, saying that. And it says 17, 17 joule unadjusted Swiss movement. And if you look at the, this is called the bridge right here. If you look at the bridge, it was actually machined very nicely. This, I don't know how much, ex, how expensive this watch was. I saw one of them on eBay today selling for $105. I don't know what condition it's in. I didn't really look that good, but as you saw earlier, the case on this is just destroyed. So any value it has, um, is, you know, cosmetically is, is virtually zero but you'll see why the inside, although it's ticking now, really doesn't have much of a value either. You can actually see these are the jewels and what they, they work as bearings for the um, individual components that they're spinning in. And if you look closely, you'll see the components spinning around inside there. Let me see if I can zoom in on that. You can get a better look. pretty incredible view. I haven't been able to get a watch just like this. That's why I'm using this one that gives such a clear view. These jewels are probably, I don't know, 60 years old. And because the watch wouldn't work, I think that's why everything inside it is in such good shape. What I mean by that is the watch wasn't ticking for a very long time. So nothing wore out. Let me show you what happened to this thing. When I took the back of this off, this, oops. When I took the back of this off, this gear right here 
fell off. Fell out in my hand. This gear. And the screw that holds the gear down was not in the watch. So you could imagine what happened. Somebody opened the watch, couldn't fix it, and years ago couldn't fix it, decided to just throw the gear back in. They probably lost the screw, or I don't know what they did, and just handed it back to the customer and said, I can't fix it. Now, I'm using, by the way, what I'm using here to show you is, this is a pin, a tiny little sewing pin that you, Seamstress would use that I've bent for my needs here. But anyway, this gear engages the crown with this drum here, and this, inside this drum is the winding spring. There is no um, rotor here, and that's why we got some of the view we have. This does not it's not an automatic watch, it's a wind-only watch. When you pull out this gear here, I mean the crown here, it disengages this gear and it allows you to set the time. When you push it back in, it allows you to wind the watch. So what I did is I, I found the screw that I had in a pile. Uh, the, I can't even tell you how small these are. If you see, if they were laying on the bench and you didn't know they were there, you literally wouldn't know they were there. That's how small they are. They look like little specks of sand. Uh, but the what what happened was apparently the guy cross threaded it because you can't see a side view of this I don't think but when I started screwing it in I thought I was cross threading it but it was going in way too easy for that so the screw doesn't sit in there correctly and because of that when you tighten it to the proper amount it binds this wheel so you have two choices you can either have it set to a distance where the watch will wind, or you can adjust the time, but you can't do both. So I think that's when the guy gave up. But I wanted to see if I could get it to even work. So I put the screw in, and I wound the watch, and it ticks like a champ. Let me get a better view here, get some more light on the subject. Now, we're at about 20x magnification, so the parts that are a little deeper, I'm gonna, you're going to see me focusing quite a bit on and off. But you see the different wheels turning at different speeds. There is the balance wheel that's flying back and forth. Let me get a focus in on that. You get a better look at that. You can see the spring here, the little hair spring right there. And let me back out just a little bit. And you can kind of see the pinion of that going back and forth, back and forth. Now what's really cool about this particular watch, that doesn't happen on a lot of watches when you take them apart like this, is way down there, you can actually see the escapement going back and forth. And that would be right here. And this is the escapement wheel, and this is the actual escapement. And the big gear you see turning around is driving the second hand. It goes completely through the watch into a tube that comes out the front and the second hand is pressure fit on, not pressure fit, um, friction fit onto that tube and the whole tube moves around. So there you go again, there's the escapement wheel and then there's the escapement. And that just goes back and forth and that escapement is what stops this from spinning continuously, and that is how it goes one second at a time. If this wasn't here, what would happen is the watch would just wind, unwind continuously at a very fast pace. This escapement, which is actually putting the brakes on this wheel here, is what's regulating the time. And that's all it is. I say that's all it is, but there are a ton of parts inside this thing. Okay, you can see the uh, you can see the spring much better. This is literally the thickness of a human hair. This, and everything is perfectly balanced so that, and calculated so that the time is correct. Now you see how fast that escapement is spinning around as opposed to the second wheel. Now here's another one. I assume that's also 
I don't know exactly which one that's working, but we've got a couple of gears here, and this is where they get stepped down. So these gears right here are working probably the minute hand. You see how slowly it's going? That's turning that, which is turning that. And then, of interest again is Now inside, inside this guy right here, I'm going to try and get some of the glare off, sorry about that. Inside this right here is where your mainspring is. And this one happens to be working perfectly for a 50 or 60 year old watch. And the reason it's working perfectly is because this gear here has been disengaged for so many years that it hasn't worked and luckily it hasn't ha if it had any water damage it wouldn't work at all obviously it would be rusted but it was kept in a probably a cool dry place there you can go again see if we can get a better shot of that a little more light not too much to throw off the white balance but and then we'll focus in remember all of these things are on different planes and we're talking about stuff that's really, really tiny. So now that this is in focus, this is in focus, this isn't. And we're talking about millimeters in height. There's your second hand. And this here, you ever see when they say adjusted or non-adjusted? Well, this particular one looks like somebody adjusted it because normally these will be close to the center. And when they adjust them, if they're really calculating and adjusting them right, these will normally only come out one or two notches on either side. They're never really brought all the way to the end there. But this is how you would increase, uh, make the watch run faster and make the watch run slower. There's also some adjustments here and some adjustments underneath. I don't go underneath. Uh, the most I do is occasionally I'll take off the bridge and that bridge is this piece that you see right here. There's a screw there on this one. Now you see here, there's a screw missing here. I found this like this, by the way. Screw missing there. And this screw, you take this off and you can take this bridge off and you can oil all these points or clean them out. You don't want to over oil anything. In fact, the oiler on this, I'll show you what it looks like. When you oil a watch, there's an oiler that you need to get. And there's the tip of an oiler. Let's see if we can focus it in. Just that little tiny paddle. And you would take the oil and just touch, touch it. And that's as much oil. You, you wouldn't believe how little oil actually you put on there. There's no other way to do this. Otherwise, if you get oil on that spring, forget it. The watch will slow down. It'll gunk up. It might work. Uh, for a little bit, but eventually it will just quit working Or it'll get so slow from getting sledged up that spring is never meant to be oiled It's supposed to be dry and clean and when I opened up this watch I just couldn't believe how clean it actually was on the inside here It was virtually spotless So again, anyway, this was just a fun little video um, You know, I can actually go a little bit closer let me do that we'll be right back now how's that for a view again there's the escapement wheel there's the escapement going back and forth and we're going to zoom out a little bit look at that you can actually see the parts moving inside the jewel Probably not going to get too many views like this. Let me try and get a better view here. Oops. Hard to judge what you're doing on this, but you see how slow that wheel is moving. But right now we're at 40x. There's another jewel. And there's another one. 
you can see the parts moving ever so slowly in there. And we're going to try and focus in. There's the balance wheel flying back and forth. There's the, the balance wheel spring, not to be confused with the main spring. And there's a much better view of it there. Imagine these parts are moving so many times over and over and over again throughout their life. And these let this watch 60 years later is still ticking. It's pretty much worthless, but it's still ticking. And you can see the tension on that hair spring. Pretty amazing when you're looking at it, this magnification. Again, we're at 40x. And I think we could see what happened here to our, yeah, you can, you can see that screw. That's the screw that I put in. And you can see it's lower on this side than it is on this side. It's raised up because the screw, the hole in there is cross-threaded. And that's where the guy, whoever, uh, whoever thought they were going to fix this thing completely destroyed it. But anyway, I think uh, we've seen enough. And hope you liked my super close-up of inside a manual watch. If you have any comments or questions, please let me know. If you like this and you like what I'm doing, please make sure you subscribe. I'll put something out here probably once a week. I do work full-time. So, and watches aren't my life, it's just a hobby. Thanks for watching.